Hello. Uh, welcome to evening prayer for Friday the 18th of December. We're really getting on now just a week until Christmas. And so we're still in the devotional season rather than a celebratory season as far as the church is concerned. O oh Lord, O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Psalm 49 Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you that dwell in the world. You of low or high degree, both rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will unfold my riddle with the lyre. Why should I fear in evil days when the malice of my foes surrounds me? Such as trust in their goods and glory in the abundance of their riches. For no one can indeed ransom another or pay to God the price of deliverance. To ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could ever pay for it. So that they might live forever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also. With the foolish and ignorant they perish and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is their home forever and their dwelling through all generations though they can call their lands after their own names. Those who have honour, but lack understanding, are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves, the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep they are destined to die, death is their shepherd. They go straight down straight to the pit. Their beauty shall waste away, and the land of the dead shall be their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul. From the grasp of death will he take me. Be not afraid if some grow rich and the glory of their house increases, for they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow after them. Though they count themselves happy while they live and praise you for your success, they shall enter the company of their ancestors who will never more see the light. Those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Zephaniah chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Ah, soil defiled, oppressing city. It has listened to no voice. It has accepted no correction. It has not trusted in the Lord. It has not drawn near to its God. The officials within it are roaring lions. Its judges are evening wolves that leave nothing until the morning. Its prophets are reckless, faithless persons. Its priests have profaned what is sacred. They have done violence to the law. The Lord within it is righteous. He does no wrong. Every morning he renders his judgment, each dawn without fail, but the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their battlements are in ruins. I have laid waste their streets so that no one walks in them. Their cities have been made desolate, without people, without inhabitants. I said, surely the city will fear me, it will accept correction, it will not lose sight of all I have bought, brought upon it. But they were the more eager to make all their deeds corrupt. Therefore wait for me, says the Lord, for the day when I arise as a witness. For my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all the heat of my anger. For in the fire of my passion, all the earth will be consumed. 
At that time, I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, my scattered ones, shall bring my offering. On that day you shall not be put to shame because of all the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. But then I will remove from your midst your proudly exultant ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. For I will leave you in the midst of I will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths. Then they will pasture and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder if you noticed back in the psalm, to ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it, so that they might live forever and never see the grave. And of course, that's exactly what Jesus did. He was the only one able to pay the ransom that we might live forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. And this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. As we come to prayer this evening, we pray that the Lord will minister into our behaviours so that we don't do things that will serve to lift the COVID-19 infection rate. We pray this not just for this present time, but in that crucial Christmas period. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember before the Lord that parts of the NHS are now beginning to struggle because we're in the flu season and we've got COVID-19 and people of course are still getting sick for all sorts of other reasons and need urgent medical treatment. Lord Jesus Christ, the NHS is an enormous thing for human beings to manage in your light and your love. Speak into the hearts and minds of all those who are seeking to provide effective medical care for this nation and help them to be wise beyond their strength and able to provide the right facilities in the right place at the right time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before the Lord the situation education as one term comes to an end and we pray that the right provision will be in place to enable children to stay in school next term to bless teachers and to give them continued strength creativity energy, perseverance and freedom from infection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
to bring before the Lord all those who are going to be working over the Christmas period and at that very place where we have a little bit more liberty to engage with our families, they'll actually be doing a job. And we pray this Christmas that the, all those services, including the emergency services, but far more people than that, will be able to keep the country running. We particularly bring before the Lord the concern that the roads will get jammed up on the 23rd and the 27th in particular. And we pray that people travelling will be kept safe and people won't do daft things because they're in a hurry. We pray that the peace of Christ will rule in our hearts. We recognise that not everybody is going to have family this Christmas and people who would have gone out uh, and celebrated in their own way and met other people may not be able to do so. Lord Jesus Christ, we just pray for an outpouring of your mercy upon us uh, in this next couple of weeks in particular as we look to celebrate you. And we pray that this Christmas we will recover that sense of you as the reason for the season. That people who have been sceptical about you will move from a place of thinking that God is nowhere to thinking that God is now here. Renew our understanding of yourself, who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift before the Lord John and Martin, our bishops, Archdeacons Robert and Nicky, Paul Lawler, our rural dean, and all those who are seeking to serve the Lord in leadership, in whatever capacity, and the responsibilities that they have. And Lord Jesus Christ, grant us grace to be very humble stewards of all that you've given us, to be guardians of your gospel, and to be effective in bringing Christianity to the upcoming generations. And for those of us who are in our senior years, we pray that we might leave a really positive and godly legacy so that the next generations will not repeat the mistakes of former generations, but will grow in holiness, truth and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we come to the collect for today. Lord, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at the second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ's coming expand your hope and deepen your joy. Earth's very fabric is changed by this miracle. The God who makes all things new is remaking your life. Let fear flee and weariness wane, for Christ has come. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.